in this video i'm going to show you why the sony a6300 yeah that's right the sony a6300 is still the best camera you can buy in 2020 or in 2021 for those of you that are just starting a youtube channel maybe you're starting a podcast you're trying to level up your live streaming or you simply want to take your video quality to the next level let's get into it What's going on party people? My name is Walter Jeanette, founder of Create, Inspire and Solve. And on this channel, you can expect to find inspiration and solutions that are gonna help you build a better brand, grow your business and help you build a community around the things that you're most passionate about. So if this is your first time watching, thanks for tuning in. Click that subscribe button and while you're at it, click that bell notification so that you can be notified every single time I post new content to the channel. But let's get into today's video. So for those of you that follow me pretty closely, whether it's here on YouTube or whether it's over on Instagram where I'm spending most of my time these days, you know I love talking about creating content on a budget and we're we're winding down 2020 and we're getting ready to go into 2021 and we see all of these new cameras that you know that are coming out we saw the sony a7c that just came out we see canon announced the uh, m50 mark ii uh, that's coming out and there, and there are a couple of more announcements that are supposed to take place before the year is out one of the things I love doing is getting under people's skin and letting you know that it doesn't take an arm, a leg, a kneecap, and an eyebrow to create great content. As a matter of fact, gear is really overrated. Now, I know a lot of people may disagree with that because we see such a rise in product reviews and we see such a rise in influencers and we see such a rise in people actually purchasing more and more gear, more and more equipment based on YouTube, based on the videos and the content that other people are putting out. This is one of the reasons I really don't do a lot of product reviews, even though I would absolutely love to, you know, Canon, Sony, Panasonic, you know, uh, even Fuji, if you're watching this, hey, definitely feel free to send me some gear and I will gladly review it for you. But the purpose of my channel is to really help you not just get started, but sustain and maintain. And a lot of times it's hard to do that when you have a lot of money invested in the equipment. So you spend more time thinking about how you can make the money instead of actually just going out and shoot and putting out the content. You know, we have people that won't even watch certain videos if they don't know what it is that you shot with. They'll completely forget all of the content that you post about that you work hours and hours on talking about. And they'll say, hey, what light did you use? Hey, what lens did you use? Hey, what camera is it that you use? And while that's important, it's not the end all be all. And I don't want you to get caught up in that. One of my mentors, Ken Branson, um, owner and founder of Mastermind Productions. I'm gonna post his information down in the description. Definitely check him out when you get a chance. But he talks about this thing called gas, gear acquisition syndrome. And a lot of us, we will go broke. We will spend all of our time, hey, I'm guilty, all of our time watching other people talk about gear when we don't even use the gear that we have. And so that's why I'm making this video now. You guys know I really don't do a lot of product reviews, but I wanted to talk about a camera that's near and dear to my heart. And I think it's actually gonna be the best camera other than your cell phone that you can actually buy right now. And that is the Sony A6300. I'm actually shooting, shooting on a Sony A6300 right now. I'm actually using the Sony 18 to 105G, um, which has a constant aperture of F4. I absolutely, in my opinion, I believe it is the best video lens that you can buy for crop sensor cameras right now from Sony. Again, there are plenty of people that will probably disagree with me, but hey, you see the footage, go check out some other reviews. I'll post some other channels that you can check out that made me actually go out and buy the, uh, the lens and let me know what you think. So the first reason that I love the A6300 so much is the price, when we're talking about entry level, when we're talking about 4K, when we're talking about taking things to the next level, we always assume that it costs a lot of money. But again, I tell you, it doesn't cost a lot of money to create great content. At the time that you're watching this, at the time that I'm actually shooting this, you can go to mpb.com and you can purchase a used Sony a6300 for relatively about $634. Now, here's the thing. I want you to keep in mind that I'm actually shooting this in the middle of a pandemic. We're talking about this in the middle of COVID. Prices are a lot higher because the supply and demand is different. So prices are a lot higher compared to what they're normally be. Now, here's the thing. I didn't pay anywhere near 
$600-$700 for my camera. I actually got my Sony A6300 for less than $300. It was a complete steal. Now, you probably won't be able to find that anywhere right now, but just keep in mind, you know, this is something you may want to consider going closer into the new year as we get closer to Black Friday. Now, there are some of you that say, well, hey, Walter, the Sony A6400 is a much newer camera and I can go get that on B&H for a couple of hundred more dollars. Absolutely, you definitely can. I think it's like somewhere around $850 if you were to get the A6400. And then like the A6600, I believe is roughly around $1,300, $1,400. Maybe let's just, let's be safe and say $1,200, $1,300 um, for the A6600. But still, we're trying to get as cheap as possible because we're talking about body only. So regardless of whether the 6400 is just a couple of hundred dollars more, that could be a huge stretch depending on what your budget looks like. And we still actually have to get the lens, okay? I'm shooting again on the Sony 18 to 105. I think you can get that on MPB. You know, I'm dropping all of the links down in the description for roughly about between four and five hundred dollars used. Um, something like I have on the camera here, the um, Sony, the, the, the Sigma, the famous Sigma 16 millimeter with the with the beautiful f um, 1.4 app, you know, f stop the aperture. I think this is going for roughly about four hundred dollars right now because I think the Sigma 30 miller f. I can't talk. The Sigma 30 millimeter f 1.4 is actually going for around about 350 or something like that, but you may be able to find, find a better deal um, used. But again, number one is the price, you know? So I, I could definitely tell you, hey, get the 6400 and all of these features. Get the 6600, all of these features. But if budget is a huge concern, then definitely the 6300 is going to be the best thing for you, all right? Reason number two that I love the A6300 so much is the image quality again you're actually looking at the sony a6300 right now i'm actually going to link as a matter of fact let's just watch it let's just watch it. I'm, I'm gonna show you real quick this is a video that i made when i first got the camera it's called long day one of the things i love to do when i come home is just drink a glass of ginger ale with some ice and so look i want you to take a quick uh quick look at this video just so you can be a better judge of what the image quality looks like versus maybe a talking head video like you're looking at right now. One of the things I love about Sony is that they're using a Super 35 sensor. So it's really a 6K image that's actually being compressed down to a 4K image. So you get way more pixels into that picture and that's what makes it so sharp. That's what makes it so buttery. That's what makes it so clean. And that's the second reason. Look, for those of you that are trying to make the transition from 1080p and you're like, yo, I gotta get into the 4K game. This is definitely a camera that you want to buy. All right. And the third and final reason, well, not really final because there's some other things I love about the camera as well. But the third reason I'm going to give you why I love the A6300 is the clean HDMI out. Now, this really affects those of us who use our mirrorless or DSLR cameras to actually stream. All right. You actually want to record straight to Facebook, stream live to Facebook, um, YouTube or whatever, you know, service you're actually using to go live. The one thing I love about Sony's over Canon, Panasonic and all of these other places that it just works right at the camera. All you have to do, go inside the settings, turn off the HDMI information and bam, you got clean HDMI out. So that's not something that's specific to the Sony a6300, but it is another plus. So the three main, the three main selling features of this camera, number one is the price. You can't beat it. Number two is the image quality that you're getting for the price. And number three, because we're living right now in a digital age, everybody's using Zoom, everybody using Google Meets, everybody is live streaming on Facebook and YouTube. It's the clean HDMI out. 
Now, like any good thing, it does have its cons. There are definitely some things that I do not love about this camera, okay? Number one, the first thing we can talk about is actually the overheating. And this is not so much a Sony a6300 problem, this was a Sony problem um, with the earlier model of cam earlier model of cameras, the mirrorless cameras that they were coming out with. They generate in the battery compartment a lot of heat. But again, one of the ways around that is if you have to shoot with battery, you definitely wanna consider um, definitely putting a cage. That's number one, putting, the, I have a small rig cage with the wooden handle on this. You wanna put a cage on it so it helps dispense the heat. Number two, you also wanna make sure you shoot with the flip screen. You also wanna pull that away because all of your heat is really generating back here. And number three, you also wanna make sure you leave the battery door open. That's another trick with Sony. You can actually leave the battery door open and still shoot versus some other brands where the camera is gonna cut off if the battery door is not closed. Now, um, in addition to that, you can also buy a battery grip, you know, which helps dispense the heat as well um, and not gonna, you know, not gonna make it overheat as quickly. One of the things I love doing is like I'm doing right now, I actually have my camera plugged into an AC adapter. And let me tell you, I have ran this thing for hours at a time. I have literally left this thing running for hours at a time and forgot to actually turning off. And and, this, and the one thing I will tell you with the A6300, you still will get the warning notification that the camera is hot. However, it will not shut off. So I know there may be some of you that's like, no, you still get the notification. You will get the notification but the camera will not shut off. It will still run. And even with it plugged up, I still do things like pull away the um, pull away the actual screen, open up the battery door, and actually keep that cage on, okay? So number two, the thing I hate about it, you know, since we're talking about power and batteries, the battery life. Again, this is not a A6300 problem. This was a Sony problem because if I'm not mistaken, Sony didn't start using new the new um, MPF batteries until maybe the A6600. Don't quote me on that. Do not quote me. I believe it was the A6600 where they started using their newer batteries where you get much better battery life out of that. But again, it depends on what you're actually using it for. If you're doing talking head videos like this inside of your office, studio, or whatever, again, get you an AC adapter and actually plug it up. Um, or get you a battery grip. Or one of the things I love is that you can actually rig this out. And I've done this before. What I did was actually buy some um, of the rods um, <laughs> that go along with the actual cage. And so I just basically took a, a anchor power adapter. I think this one was like 10,000 milliamps per hour. Took that, rigged it out. Um, and with the dummy battery, because mine has USB over it, I was just able to connect it. You don't want to power, it's not going to work if you try to do it over USB. It's still going to die, okay? The, the A6300 is not built like that. But if you have the dummy battery, you can plug that into an actual um, external battery, um, external battery charger, and it will work like that, okay? And the last thing that I really hate about the Sony A6300 is that it doesn't have an articulating screen, as you can see. Um, the A6400 and the 6600, if I'm not mistaken, they actually flip up. Mine does not flip up all the way, so you know I'm not really able to monitor myself right now because I shoot videos all the time. I don't really need to see myself. I'm good. I'm looking directly in the lens. There's nothing I need to check. There's nothing I need to reference. But for those of you who may be a beginner and you need you may need to get used to shooting more often, that definitely could be a caveat. But nevertheless, you know, it still works, you know, as it needs to. Um, I think it's a great buy. There definitely are some things that I don't like about it. But for everything that I don't like about it, there is an actual workaround, okay? All right, so let me know. How do you feel? Did you ever own the A6300? Is it something that you would consider buying? Maybe it's something you would consider using as a B cam. I know a lot of people use it to actually take pictures when they're out on the go, you know, which is something I do as well. Um, but also let me know, what is it that you're shooting with? What is it that helps you create content on a more consistent basis? I want to hear from you. But again, thank you for watching. Again, click that subscribe button if this is your first time watching. And again, hit that bell notification so you can be notified every single time I'm posting new content to the channel. Until next time, you guys have a great rest of your day.